Hello everyone, I have another short update here on the marine drone attack on the Pavel Dazarvin. This satellite image here, shared by H.I. Sutton on covert shores, this shows when the attack took place. So it's 8.47am UTV time and 1147 local time. What's interesting though, as we actually see the moment the attack took place, caught on the satellite imagery. So an underwater explosion is captured by the image near the Project 22160, which is pretty cool. We've seen attacks caught on satellite imagery before, notably in and around Snake Island in the past. But it's always interesting when it happens, because these commercial satellites aren't on station over the area at all times. So it's a nice coincidence when they are there in order to capture an attack such as this one. This explosion looks to be a little ways from the Project 22160 itself, so this could be a failed attempt to attack it which was intercepted, or it could be the remnants and disturbed water from the attack that hit the 22160, with the 22160 in the process of moving away. Now this shows the 22160 with, marked on the image, a pair of what is described by H.I. Sutton as being fast boats. Now, this attack was announced by Russia as being carried out by underwater marine drones, likely the Teleka 150, which I looked at briefly in yesterday's video. So these fast boats may be Russian boats on hand trying to protect the 22160. But we can't rule out this being a multi-drone boat attack, so Ukraine launching regular drone boats to draw the fire and using the underwater one to sneak up on the 22160 whilst the crew were distracted. Towards the north, you can see two boats, presumably Russian patrol ships, heading towards Sevastopol. Before I take a look at the next satellite image, this photo has been shared online claiming to show the Pavel Dazarvin near Novo Rusysk. Now, the Dazarvin being at Novo Rusysk ties in with what Russian sources said. They said the damage to the Dazarvin wasn't too serious, so she was sent all the way to Novo Rusysk to repair, whilst the tug that was hit was damaged more seriously and had to go straight to Sevastopol. Now in this photo the boat looks undamaged, but as we saw in the videos and photos after the attack, it was the other side of it that was hit, so damage wouldn't really be seen. Additionally, let's zoom in. The dissolving isn't moving here like Russia claimed, it's anchored. You can see the anchor chain near the front. However, that isn't proof that the ship was damaged and disabled and can't move under its own power. The photo is from Novo Assist, so it did get here, and the video we saw of it, it was moving under its own power afterwards. I think this is likely anchored here, possibly waiting for space to appear in order for it to enter dry dock. So I do think the damage to the dissolving is light, but clearly, since it was sent to Novo Assist, it does need repairs. Now you may notice the camouflage pattern on this ship. This is used by Russia to try and make its ships appear smaller than they are to drone operators, in order to try and fool Ukraine into either not attacking them, as they're deemed not a worthy target, or to get the drone to attack different parts, such as the operator thinking they're about to hit the rear of the ship, but actually hitting the middle. So that's what you're seeing here. Nova Resist has three dry docks, one taken up by another Project 22160. Likely, the Sergei Kotov. It's interesting that this ship, the Dazarvin, needs to be sent all the way here instead of Sevastopol. This highlights the issues caused by Ukraine destroying the Minsk and Rostov. As well as bagging a ship and a submarine, they also blocked two of Sevastopol's five dry docks. But other three dry docks are confirmed by satellite imagery a few days ago to be occupied. Our last satellite image here shared by Brady Afik on Twitter. This shows Russia's defensive barriers and berms at the entrance to Sevastopol. So it's a maze of various nets and floating barriers and barges to try and stop Ukraine's marine drones from entering. Some of the barriers are on the surface, some look to be underwater. Now the past few weeks we've seen two confirmed strikes on ships near the entrance to Sevastopol harbour itself. This one, the Pavel Dazarvin, and also a Bora-class ship which got slight damage. There was also the Sergei Kotov which was hit, but it was unknown where exactly that was when marine drones got it. So these nettings seem to be creating a bit of a bottleneck and making Russian ships vulnerable when entering Sevastopol harbour. 
So whilst Russia has solved one problem, that of marine drones entering the harbour itself to attack ships, they have created another. Now finally, it was also reported yesterday that a tug was also hit by Ukraine. The tug being one which was sent to provide assistance to the Project 22160. Now, this tug is now confirmed to be this, the Professor Nikolai Muru, which entered service in 2014. The Muru was originally stationed at Novorossiysk as part of a 314th rescue ship squad and has since been transferred to Sevastopol. These types of tugs are rescue tugs intended for towing ships in distress and are equipped with firefighting equipment, water pumping equipment and the ability to supply electricity to stricken ships. They also feature medical personnel in the medical bay. This is quite interesting because Russia only has four such rescue tugs, including the Muru with the Black Sea Fleet. Russia does have quite a large number of harbour tugs and sea-going tugs, but they aren't specialised for rescue operations. Though some of the larger ones, some of the sea-going ones, do have firefighting capabilities. So Russia could actually find themselves in a bit of a pickle if more of these rescue tugs are hit by Ukraine. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. If so, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Now, before we finish, I'm going to play a video about the ongoing fundraiser for the Ukraine Volunteer Centre, who do some amazing work helping a variety of causes in Ukraine. Big thanks to everybody who's donated so far, and thanks to everybody planning to donate. Thanks so much, and take care, everybody. Good afternoon, greetings from the Ukrainian Volunteer Center. Today we are announcing a new fundraising. One Volkswagen uh, Taurek car for paramedics from uh, Donetsk direction. They desperately need a car as all their vehicles were damaged during the last attack on their position. Car price is $10,000. And uh, 1,000 liters of diesel fuel for a third separate battalion of Ukrainian volunteer army going because there is a catastrophic lack of fuel. The fuel at war is like a blood that circulates in the logistics artery. Without it we won't be able to achieve our goals. Fuel price is $1,500. Recently soldiers from aerial reconnaissance on the Zaporizhia direction contacted us and they need a mask for the antenna to fly longer. The mask price is $300. Also, a pharmaceutical company contacted us from abroad and they are ready to send us 200 first aid kits and its price $1,200. The overall goal of the fundraising is $10,000 and $4,000. We read your comments. That's why we have decided to make a two shirt of glasses set. And the first one will be sent to the person who will make the biggest donation. And the second we will send to a random person who will make a donation starting from $20. Thank you all of your kind words in the comments. Thank you for your trust. And thank you for your support. Glory to Ukraine.